Hi everyone. All right, let's talk about Gopher. Gopher, Gopher, Gopher. I had a request just the other day on Mastodon to do that. Uh, where was that? Um, let's scroll back in time while I think about it. Um, all right. So those of you who know me know that I'm a big fan of the Gopher protocol. What is the Gopher protocol? You might ask. Well, you're a weirdo if you don't know about it. Um, but the Gopher protocol is. Just like HTTP, the World Wide Web, uh, it is a protocol for delivering stuff online, um, specifically documents. But, you know, you can do sound files, whatever it is, just like the web. Uh, it's structured. It can link between things, kind of like hypertext, but not exactly. And it actually predates the web by a couple months. Um, in the mid-90s, it was the dominant protocol for what we would think of now as the web, for whatever that is, if it didn't have the word web. Um, browsing, I guess? Yeah, it was the thing. And then uh, over time, you know, kind of 96, 97, when, when speeds started picking up on the internet, um, images being delivered within documents and hypertext, the, the kind of the power of that came to the forefront and it started taking over. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why it faded from that spotlight. Those those are the ones I kind of point to. There was also a a bit of an issue where the University of Minnesota here, who uh, whose team was responsible for its creation, Mark uh, McCahill, uh, being the the leader of that team, um, they wanted to get their hands on stuff. So uh, money wise, so they started charging groups that wanted a server. If you wanted to go for a server, you had to pay them kind of a licensing fee, which it's not how the internet works. Uh, and it wasn't the mentality of the internet at the time, the the way people were interacting with one another. You know, it was, it was kind of this emerging thing that would eventually, I think, become the open source community. Um, this idea that you put something out there to make the computing environment better and people share it. That's that's the way the web worked. Well, pre-web. That's the way the internet worked for a long time. And the people in charge of the University of Minnesota didn't really get that. Uh, so that created some friction. Then the web came on. It didn't have that problem. People started flipping over. And it's not like it was a, a no-brainer to flip over. Schools, especially library systems, they were really integrated with Gopher. Um, Gopher was a really good glue to take all of these different things, these different uh, protocols, these different services, and stick them together in a way that you could get at them. Um, where beforehand, there wasn't really a good way to do that. You know, if, if I wanted a dictionary online, there wasn't a way to do that before. You know, there might be a service I could directly connect to and a, like a specific protocol I could talk to, like the dict protocol. Um, that's a thing. Yes. Uh, in fact, well, let's, let's take a look at an example like that. Um, let's get into Gopher and I'll kind of show you around a little bit. So yeah, let, let's start at the beginning. How do you get into Gopher? It is still around. Uh, the easiest way is with the Lynx browser. You probably still have it if you're running a Linux machine or, uh, if you're, even if you're not, if you, if you have a terminal, you can install Lynx pretty easily. Um, and then any gopher address is just gopher colon slash slash and something. Uh, in this place, we're going to go to my gopher page. So gopher dot black. That's me. Gopher black. And there you go. You're, you're left in links with this browsable thing. Now, I'm using some information lines. Type I for information. We'll talk about that in a minute. To put these headers on and kind of organize my content. But you see there's... Uh, based on this column on the left here, you see what type of file we're linking to. So these are all directories. And then here's some specific files. An HTML file, we'll talk about that, uh, and some more at the bottom. Now, <clears throat> if we look at this first one, the about page is a directory again, and you see there's links within it. Um, and there's a bunch of information in here about how to contact me, who I am, yada, yada, yada. Uh, flogs, we'll get into that in a minute as well. These are all really cool 
you know, things, just like you would have on a, on a website. You'll notice, though, that there's no links, like, within the text. I didn't have, say, last updated be a link. Um, everything is line-based. So your line is either information-based or it's a link. That's it. That's pretty much all of the rules for <laughs> for Gopher. Now, there's, there's more to it when we get into the... <coughs> <coughs> COVID. Um, we get into the syntax, so we'll look at that in a minute. But I mentioned glue before, and the uh, let's see here. Do I have a link to it anywhere? Um, dict. No, did I not have a link to a dict file somewhere? I thought I did. It's not in games right now. I thought it was in explorations. BBSs. Used to be in man pages. Go for application. Um, oh, well. all right. So yeah, there is a, there's a way to get to, um, other services like Addict or, oh, I know, a BBS. Um, so let's see here. This, there you go. You see how these links on the side here say tell? Well, that's because I'm using a, a telnet type in that link. Uh, so going back to about gopher, we'll talk a little bit about types. You can link to a bunch of different stuff. This is the stuff you can link to. You can link to a raw text file. That is, th these types all kind of prefix with a letter or a number. Type 0 is a text file. Type 1 is another menu. This is a directory. Uh, CCSO name servers, these are kind of uh, pre predecurs, uh, prede predecessor? Prede they came before like LDAP. Um, error codes, um, old Mac bin files, DOS files. These are kind of no longer relevant because we have binary file. Um, UU encoded file. That was important at a time. Um, Gopher full text search, which is still used today. And I'll show you a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, the binary file, the mirror. Um, not a lot of servers represent, uh, or, uh, um, take advantage of the of the mirror type but basically if you had two different servers that could serve the same content this was a way of defining those as mirrors or alternate servers so if the first one went down the second one would be available and I, I believe links now supports that one or two others but not a lot of clients know how to read that um, there's this file format that I'm not going to say out loud so I don't anger half the internet and uh, image files which kind of handle that one anyway and then of course, there's these what they call non-canonical types. So when Gopher came out in the early 90s, it was uh, in the RFC 1436, uh, which we can see back in here if we were to go to, say, my, my archives. Uh, let's see, RFCs of note and 1436. Here is the Gopher RFC on Gopher. Now, in this one, they defined the core types and there they are item types so this is what we just went over zero through nine the plus the t the g and the i those capital i um, what they didn't define was some of these others like h for html d for doc for like pdfs and word docs and the lowercase i which is super important now and s for sound files now, we'll look at, uh, at each of these in turn, but first I want to start with the I. The informational message, 1436 came out in, oh, what was that, 90, was it 91? Uh, let's see. Um, 93, 93, March of 93. By the end of that year, we have evidence that people were using the lowercase I information type within the same year. Um, I haven't been able to pinpoint the exact origin of it. There's some groups that were pointed to as an example of popular sites that used it, but I don't know if that they were the, the people that introduced it. But basically, within a year, Gopher was widespread using the informational message type. And that is what I'm using in a lot of these pages for these descriptions. So archives over the top here. These are bits of awesome that I've salvaged from around the net. That's an information type. It's not a link. That's that's pretty much all it is. Um, 
They're super important, though, because without them, all you have is links. And links can be fairly descriptive, but that doesn't give you a lot of the power for some of the advanced stuff that people do now on, uh, on Gopher. So if you were to look at hmm, ah, some of these things here, I'm doing some fancy stuff, setting up uh, <coughs> some cool shenanigans for uh, Japanese uh, music notation. Um, can you do this without it? Yes. Uh, and there are some Gopher 1436 purists out there who are diehard uh, avoiding the, the lowercase i type, the information message type. Um, there are certain communities that are, that are big on that. I'm not that way. I like to use what works, and most every client will, will display them just fine. So, um, right, links. Um, I mentioned clients. Uh, let's not jump there yet. Let's talk a little bit about these other types, too. HTML is probably the other big one. Um, Gopher had a second RFC come out, and that was... Uh, no? I forget where it is. It was later. Um, and basically when the URL syntax was added, the gopher colon slash slash was, was added as well. Um, that wasn't a thing be in the beginning of gopher. You can kind of see it down here in the bottom of links. It's saying my address here. And you see the type uh, for the page we're on is a type 1 because it's a directory. Uh, and then there's a kind of a path after that. That All of this syntax is new. What we saw in the beginning when Gopher first came out, we can actually inspect a little bit if we curl Gopher, Gopher.black. Now this mess is actually the underlying Gopher map or the, or the raw um, data that's being served up. If we were to telnet into um, uh, the, the proper port 70 for Gopher and connect to the server and you know hit enter or whatever it is to get that response back, this is what we would see as well. Curl does the same thing. Now you see at the very beginning here in the left hand column, this first character defines each line's type. So there's the I and then there's a descriptive message. And eventually you see this go for black 70 at the end. Well, after the descriptive message, see here's a type one about, after the descriptive message, there's a literal tab character. That's not spaces. It can't be spaces. It actually has to be a tab. And after that tab, there is a path. A blank path is valid, but a lot of the times they start with a slash because people are mapping them to file system paths. Not required in Gopher. Um, these could be total gibberish. It doesn't matter as long as the server gets that string that uses that to identify what resource to give back. After that, another tab and the server name. Finally, another tab and the port name, uh, port number. That's the Gopher syntax. That's what got used. Um, and then a, a TCP connection would be made to that server on that port requesting that resource. And that's it. And it is really basic. Gopher, when you look at it as a protocol, there's not much more than a curl. Um, it's a straight TCP request. You send the selector and you get back this gibberish. If you send the selector, uh, let's see, we know it's a type one, right? <coughs> if you get, if you request a type one, you get back a type one. If you request a type zero, you get back, well, the same thing. The server doesn't really care. It's just going to give it back to you. The client needs to know that it's a type one or type zero to know how to parse it and how to display it. So the, there's a lot of that onus pushed onto the client to, to work properly. So let's see, if I were to go back to links and we're on this home page here, you see down where it says type one. Well, if I were to edit that and I were to go to type zero and let's go to my about page. Now I'm getting the same information we saw before on the about page, but it's treating it like raw text. So you're actually seeing the underlying code for what that gopher map looks like. And it's atrocious. You wouldn't want to write this, right? Um, and that brings us to a, the big challenge with authoring on Gopher. Uh, almost everybody, once they start, 
writing in Gopher, they figure out some way to streamline this process. Whether that's, um, you know, you pick a server that you don't need to write all the gibberish for. Um, common servers today are Gophernicus, uh, PyGopherD, um, GeomyIDay, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, I'll, I'll show you some of those in a bit. But the, the good thing about most of the popular servers these days is you don't need to write everything. You can just write the start of a line or uh, for, for Gophernicus, you don't need to have the type I at all. You just write anything. And as long as that line doesn't have any tabs in it, Gophernicus will fill in the gaps for you. If, um, if I were to request, let's see, if we go to gopher colon slash slash cosmic dot voyage, this is another uh, thing that I run, a community for writers. Now this page is a type one, by default it's a, it's a directory, right? This is running the Gophernicus server and if we were to look at the source that comes back, if I request this as a zero, we see the I, we see all of the tab. In this case, it's saying null host because there's no, there's no link here for type I. Uh, if we look down below, though, you see these links all have a proper cosmic voyage and the port number. Well, Gophernicus, when I wrote this on Gophernicus, I didn't include the I's. I didn't include any tabs, but when it served up, Gophernicus inserts that in there for me. So that's great. Um, PyGopherD has similar options. I run, for Gopher Black, uh, a server called um, uh, Motzinger. Motzing, no, Motzinger, or? Oh, geez. Anyway, um, <laughs> I should know how to pronounce it. Anyway, a um, lot of different server types. If you have a real hard time with the link syntax, though, geomyidea, geomyidei, that it's written in the bottom left on there. This is a project from the Bitrike community. You can find them by going to, let's see, the community is bitrike.org. Um, bitrike.org. They are uh, some of those more gopher purists that I was talking about that really like to stick to the, the 1436 protocol. Um, they've written a bunch of stuff. Uh, but they're, the, the project for that is in here somewhere. Um, Geomyiday? No, it's probably in their Git repos then. There it is, projects. Uh, that's the crawler. There it is. So you can access it and you can get the whole Git history here. They have a README that you can read on Gopher. Uh, and you can find this on, on the web as well if you want. Um, but their syntax is really friendly. Uh, they don't use any tabs at all. They kind of use a, a bracket with, um, I, think it's, I think it's pipe delineated. Pretty sure it's pipes. It might be commas, but I'm pretty sure it's pipes. Um, so you don't need to worry about any of that. And their server also does some really cool stuff with CGIs. It's very powerful. Uh, for, a, for a minimalist community that's into do one thing and do it right, Geo uh, My Idei is actually one of the more uh, complex and, and robust Gopher servers out there. So uh, it's pretty cool. I do recommend it. Um, and then, of course, um, Gophernicus is probably the number one most popular. Uh, there is the, uh, oh, what is that called? The one that uh, Flood Gap uses. Um, ah. I'm drawing a blank right now. It used to be really, really popular, and I'm drawing a blank. Well, anyway, look into it. Uh, if you are on a Tilde community or you have a community server somewhere, like SDF or uh, Tilde Team or Tilde Town, a lot of those offer Gopher already, and you don't need to install the server yourself. You can just create a page. Um, so SDF has uh, the MK Gopher make Gopher command that'll actually walk you through some of this. They run uh, Gophernicus now, and you can do all the, the normal stuff on there. Uh, Tilde Team and Town both, I believe, run Gophernicus. Um, some of the others run, run different server softwares, but it's a great place to get started. Now, let's see. HTML. I mentioned HTML links, but I didn't talk about what they look like. So let's take a look at them. Uh, down here at the bottom of my page, you see all of these end in HTML. So let's do that curl again and look what it looks like. Now this is an H type. Then I get the description. Then I get the tab. 
And then instead of a path, I get URL colon and a full URL. Now the stuff afterward is pretty much irrelevant. It's ignored by the client. But if your client supports type H, it will use this to signal some sort of conversion over to HTML. So in links, what that looks like is you get this page. It's going to refresh automatically and it's going to open it in whatever my HTTP handler is, which in this case is already links. So uh, it'll take me to my HTML site. Uh, if I was in another browser though, let's try VF1. Now VF1 is a fantastic uh, Gopher client, very fast. You see this this one displays a little differently. My um, My different types are displayed either with a trailing slash for directories um, with just green for documents and it looks like HTML does this little HTM as the suffix. So there's some, some cool displays here. Colors are supported and I think by color scheme it can be tweaked as well. This is just my theme that I'm running. Um, but it runs these numbers down the side and instead of scrolling up and down you can just type in the number of what you want. So if I go to 18 Boom. Oh, look, it's going to refresh. It's going to take me there. Now, um, I wonder if that's my server that serves that up and then the client handles that. I forget exactly which one it is. One of those is responsible for how that served up. It could be the server. It could be the client. Don't don't crucify me. Anyway, uh, here I am and, and now I'm in the, the web and VF1 is actually serving web content for me. Uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, wait, is it? Is it serving for me? <laughs> no, no, I don't know what it's doing, honestly. Uh, but some clients can do it and some clients can't do it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about clients because there's a lot of them. Um, so this page here at www.circomalunar.space uh, tilde solderpunk slash clients.html uh, this one here is Solderpunk's list of available clients. This is just what we've been able to gather and throw his way for him to put up here. So if you know of another client that's out there, uh, let him know and he'll add it to the list. This is the popular command on clients. I was just talking about VF1. That is from Solderpunk himself. Um, I'm a big fan of links. I use that all the time. Uh, Bombadillo is really cool as well. Bombadillo. Bombadillo? I say Bombadillo. Bombadillo, or <coughs> Bombadillo, whatever it is, um, works similar to VF1 with the, the numbers. Um, you have to kind of hit space or enter to kind of go into command mode, and then you type in the number. So let's say I'm going to go to my flogs. Flog, by the way, uh, just like blog is a web log, Flog is a gopher log. It's a place to journal online. Uh, so I can go to the flog roll. And here, this is kind of a, a list I keep of running logs from a bunch of different people. Um, Bombadillo, very cool. Also, Burrow from Sloom. Sloom. Let me see here. Who makes... That is down here, and that is from Sloam Drome. Sloom, Sloom. I don't know how to say your name, Sloam. S L O U M Drone Sloam. Burrow is a graphical client. Uh, I can use it with my mouse. See, now I've got myself my own Gopher Black here as a listed as a favorite. But we can go over to Flood Gap, which is one of the most famous, longest running Gopher servers out there. Uh, this one's run by uh, Cameron. Uh, oh boy, I'm dropping everything tonight. I can't remember Cameron's last name. Um, Cameron, famous. Been running this forever. I'm using the scroll wheel. I can see stuff. I can jump around and learn about that. I can link over to SDF. This is actually how I first learned about SDF, the Superdimensional Fortress, one of the longest running uh, public access Unix systems out there. Uh, I am going to be hosting this video, in fact, on TubeNix, which is a PeerTube instance run by SDF. So kudos to them. Uh, you should join. It's free or free-ish, like three bucks maybe will get you validated if you don't know anybody. Um, or you can just wait. 
Uh, but it's got a ton of stuff to offer. Just incredible depths. Uh, some really old, cool software on there. Some some vintage stuff. A really neat. Um, I don't even know where to start. Uh, but yeah, go check it out. Make a gopher site. Or or check out the Tildeverse as a place to get started as well. They kind of all overlap, all these pub mixes. So anyway, um, let's go to the SDF page real quick. So the Flogosphere here, this is where people on SDF post their updated flog entries. And they use me, Tom Sears Gopher Hole. And if you click on that, it'll take you over to gopher.club, which is an alias for SDF. And this content is exactly what we were just looking at on Gopher Black. I mirror my content on SDF as well. So you can read my flog, which I update pretty regularly, as you can see. So back into 2017. Um, see my 2018 archives go for a while. Got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, some of it is even interesting. Um, so Burrow, though, is a fantastic client uh, if you want a, a graphical one. I mean, it's still text-driven, but it is graphical. It has favorites. It has some uh, some stuff you can set in settings, which doesn't seem to be working right now, but it it's really cool. And uh, it is open source as well, so if you want to contribute, Go for it. There's some issues there logged. There is Windows clients. Um, there's <laughs> Sakurama. Uh, on mobile, um, Charles Childers. Ch Childers? Charles? Yeah. Um, his Gopher client is pretty much it. That's available on iOS, but it's fantastic. Uh, kudos to him. It's a really, really good client on iOS. I use it on my uh, son's iPad for when I need a a client uh, pocket gopher and diggy dog on Android work <coughs> I'm not a, a giant fan of either one um, there's also um, some browser plugins that kind of work uh, I mostly run from the command line and I will occasionally uh, run from a um, a proxy so uh, til the Tildiverse runs a proxy. There's a bunch of them online, but here is my site that we were just looking at on the terminal, but you can get to it on the web. So uh, proxies are, are helpful. I use it on mobile more than anything because uh, I don't like the Android clients so much. Um, but, you know, it's, they're, they're worth checking out if you don't have anything else or if you just want to kind of play around and go for space for a little bit. So that's kind of the basics of it. Now, uh, if you want to get started in Gopher, um, I actually created this page here. Uh, it's the Gopher Zone, Gopher.Zone, and it's available on the web. So you don't need to know about Gopher to get started on Gopher yet. You know, you can go here. Uh, and if you click the About, you'll see it is just pointing you over to a GitHub page. This whole page is served off of GitHub. Um, and I didn't write most of the content, if any of it. Uh, these are Gopher tutorials or tips for beginners, uh, tips for publishing. These are things that other people have posted around on Gopher that I found useful and I thought would be good for people getting started. So tutorial for absolute beginners, a great place to start. This is for the Bitrite community and that's the original link that you can get to on Gopher once you get started. And here's the text available for you there. Um, how can I set up my Gopher space? This is <clears throat> content specific to setting one up on SDF. I'll kind of prefix that, but then you get all of the information there on how to get started. Uh, one of uh, one of my Gopher friends here, um, Kat, published this fantastic write-up about how to make a Gopher map. Now, if you are going to make one from scratch, this is the definitive guide on how to do it. He, he gives you some good ways to think about tab separated files, uh, you know, what the different types are, how to use them, how to stitch it all together, uh, tips and tricks and what to look out for, <laughs> how to do some really cool artwork um, with with your text. Uh, but Kat is, uh, is brilliant and does all of this um, manually. Uh, Kat is, is a big fan of doing everything from scratch. So every one of, uh, of his posts that you see will be hand laid out. This is, this is his page on Gopher that I kind of took to that site. Um, so please check out those resources, how to Gopher map. Um, oh, there's the GeoMyIDay readme. 
how to get started. Um, I'm go for black. There's also an easy place for you to get help in IRC. So you can join us in the Gopher channel on the SDF IRC network, irc.sdf.org, or you can join us in the Gopher channel on the Tildeverse. And we'll talk about Gopher. We're happy to help you out and uh, you, can, you know help you get started on anything, tildeverse.org. This is the Tildeverse. If you want to find out, you know, servers and services, it's all here. Um, somewhere in here is some stuff about IRC and how to join it. IRC. There it is. Stop by our IRC network. Tilde chat. And if you don't know how to IRC, even that is okay because there is a link on here somewhere on how to join directly. I'm not reading this very fast. Brain's a little slow tonight. Ah, here we go. You can connect to it with this way. You can do all that. Um, hmm. Well, you could probably see a link to it that I can't, but there is a link somewhere in here that you can just use. That's the quotes database. Or you can just directly jump in and chat. Um, I think they're running, it was glowing bare. I forget what uh, what they're using now. Oh, the lounge. The lounge. That's what it is. I think it's the lounge. Tildeda.chat? No, I forget. Anyway, there is a web interface. Just click around on the Tildeda.chat or the Tildeverse websites and you'll find it. Lounge? No. Anywho. Um, and that'll take you into the IRC network. You can always get there if you have an SDF account by uh, hopping into IRC or if you're on the Tilde server already come into IRC come into the gopher channels ask us questions we love content um, it is a vibrant community people write a lot they share a lot with each other it's it's slow internet it is a place for reading long form for really engaging with people there's not a place for ads not a place for comments you have to read and if you really want to feedback to somebody you send them an email you write your own entry um, you'll see if you come into my gopher space, for instance, and you look at my vlog, uh, not too long ago, I wrote this reply to Smoldering Wizard about uh, role versus role playing. And I have a link to his or her original post, uh, which you could see was referencing even some stuff on the web and some older ones. So you can kind of chain back in time. And this is this is how we engage with one another. We write a reply as a post or send an email. Um, Lots and lots of deep thinking <laughs> and sometimes some uh, some nonsense as well. So come join us. Like I said, it's it is a really great place to hang out to slow down a little bit. If you are stuck at home right now due to the global pandemic, it's something new to explore and to try out. I hope we see you around. Take care.